The new survival game in Shrouded is ready to explode into early access, and I've got the info that you need for launch day. From the time that I've been able to play, it has a lot of similarities to Valheim, but also to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Minecraft building, with some unique features built in. The adventure seems really good. The building looks amazeballs. Crafting is done in an interesting way. There are puzzle dungeons. You can be a mage, a ranger, a warrior. You can play solo or with friends. And I'll tell you, it doesn't take long to get a grapple and a glider. So that's an automatic win. Let's go. What is Enshrouded? Enshrouded is described as a cooperative survival crafting action RPG open world sandbox game. That's a mouthful. Survive in the fallen kingdom of Emberville, consumed by an evil fog, the Shroud. Fight wild beasts and fearsome bosses, construct grand halls and shape your homestead's terrain. Forge your warrior with diverse equipment and a huge open skill tree. Venture alone or with allies into the mist to uncover the secrets of the kingdom's downfall. So you awaken as one of the flameborn and begin your adventure with up to 16 players. It can be played solo, but they recommend grabbing a friend to play it with. Your kingdom has been lost, but a few remaining warriors were placed in a long sleep until time that they could fight again. This is your time. Exploration. You can explore anywhere you want. But the game does give you clues and missions to guide you along your way. You'll soon learn about the shroud and that it's a challenge to survive inside of it. So you'll need to find and craft items to help you survive there in order to go farther into the game. You'll also find certain locations that will allow you to fast travel between certain places, including your home. Though beware, you cannot fast travel out of the deadly shroud. The world itself has multiple different biomes with different moms and bosses. It's really a beautiful looking and feeling game with soaring vistas and nice details. But being in the shroud can feel quite creepy, especially as you watch the bar at the top of your screen ticking down the time you have left until demise if you stay too long without protection. Although enshrouded is a survival game, it seems to lean heavily into the adventure and exploration aspects. While you do have to hunt and gather items, this is more to give you buffs than to keep you from starving to death so that you can get back out there and have more adventures. Roles and skills. You'll soon begin developing your skills. As you look at the skills tree, you can see that it's quite extensive. There are several roles that you can develop. Mage, which is of course magic, ranger, which is bows and sneakiness, and warrior, which is more like the tank. You don't have to do one or the other, and you can choose which skills you lean into for each area. But the more that you lean into one role, the farther you can get with skills for that role. So you'll gain skill points as you go battle mobs along the way, and it's up to you how and where on the skill tree you wanna spend them in order to unlock more advanced skills along that branch. Building. Of course, you'll wanna build a home base, the building system allows for some stunning creations with an impressive amount of choice. King Games made the game with a voxel-based system, which means that you can change everything one small chunk at a time if you wish. A block seems to be about the size of a fourth to a half the size of a Minecraft block, so you can stick to large building pieces that you get more blueprints for as you advance, which integrate seamlessly into the world they're in, or you can build or edit one block at a time. You can make caves and hobbit holes by digging really deep and you can build super high in the air. And unlike Valheim, but more like Minecraft, there is no build support issue. So yes, you can build floating bases. The build system looks absolutely amazing and this will be a builder's paradise. I'll touch on a few of the highlights I'm really excited about. Like Valheim, you'll put down an object to claim an area as your base, a flame altar. This altar can actually be upgraded to encompass larger spaces too. But unlike Valheim, mobs will not attack your builds and you nor your friends can accidentally damage builds either. That can only be done with the build hammer. 
The hammer allows you to choose a blueprint of what you want to build and gives you a ghost outline so you can see what it looks like, including rotating it all around and phasing it. When you do decide to change a part of your build, the parts that you destroy automatically send the resources back into your inventory. When you're looking at blueprints to build, the game automatically does the math for you of how many resources you need. If you overlap or merge building pieces, the game automatically subtracts the resources from the overlapping part. So you're only paying for the new part of the part. Does that make sense? And if you change your mind about something, there is an undo button. Yep, you heard me right. You can undo up to four of your last placements. There are a whole host of building materials and styles and an impressive amount of decoration items as well. You can get some good ideas for building from the different types of ruins that you'll find around the world, or maybe decide to take one over and renovate it. And this single block voxel system works for terrain manipulation as well. So you can take away or add back terrain seamlessly. You also get terrain blueprints as well. So if you wanna make a dirt ramp, you can just choose the ground ramp component and it's smoothly placed. One thing that can't be overstated is that as you build in a shrouded, the creations seem to visually flow into their surroundings. They've done an amazing job of having pieces flow together in a way that seems seamless with each other and with the feeling of the world around them, like it belongs there. This is really hard to do, and they seem to have nailed it. Crafting. Crafting has the standard survival components of gathering items to be able to craft, building a workbench, and upgrade as you progress and get more advanced materials. It's pretty forgiving as far as the amount of work involved in gathering resources. Those of us who live in the grind of Valheim resource gathering might even consider it downright easy. No falling tree deaths here. <laughs> Add to that the fact that all items outside of your base respawn pretty frequently. And it's clear that Enshrouded is more focused on you spending your time adventuring or building than cutting down trees or searching for food. Enshrouded does allow you to craft quite a few things straight from your UI without having to visit the workbench. The workbench is where you go to create more advanced things or components of what you want to craft or build also. For example, to build from wood, you harvest wood from trees, go to the workbench, and craft wood blocks. These blocks are what is spent to build. A nice touch is that whenever you go to the workbench, you hear a ding or like cha-ting, and all of your armor and weapons are instantly repaired, including torches. Of course, as you gather resources, you will unlock further recipes to use at a variety of crafting stations. Depending on what that item is will depend on how long it takes to craft. However, you can set it to craft or process and go on about your business. You're not locked into a crafting animation. You don't have to be there with it. As you progress through the story, you'll gather NPCs to live and work at your base. Each NBC provides a different specialization and thus provides you with new unique crafting abilities. For example, the first flameborn that you awaken is the blacksmith. This chatty fellow <laughs> will give you the ability to create a forge and kiln and work metal scraps into armor and weapons, among other things. When you first put on your armor, you may wonder where it went. It's no longer in your inventory spaces. That's because it's on your character. And a quick tip about the blacksmith, his kiln will process what you put into it over time, whether you're there or not. And he has quite a few spots in there to place things. But if they aren't being used for the recipe that's processing at the time, they just sit there. So this can be a huge extra storage space early on when storage is tight. You'll then develop more missions to find more NPC workers to help with areas such as magic and so on. A really nice touch too is that you have two rows of hotkeys. So like if you're building and have a hot bar full of build items and a wolf runs up to attack you, you could quickly hit the tilde button, which is just under escape, to switch to your second hot bar that could be filled with combat items. Combat. One of the key components of a survival game is, of course, combat. And so far, it has definitely felt like combat in an adventure game. 
You get pretty early access to all types of weapons, swords, axes, bows, and magic. And Shrouded blends the use of these together pretty well. For example, whatever melee weapon you may be using at the time, you can simply hit Q and it'll automatically switch to whatever your ranged weapon is to change up your play style quickly. This makes it easy to kind of suit your combat style to your preference. And having the freedom to choose how you fight really plays into going in game with friends and taking on different roles in different situations. Combat seems pretty straightforward at first from what I've seen. Melee setups have block, dodge, parry as you'd expect. But as you gain skill points and unlock new abilities, such as quick teleport instead of just dodging, things can get more interesting. Blocking in general makes you very safe, although it does take stamina, so keep an eye on that. Parry timing will be a skill to develop as well so that you can stun mobs. Once they're stunned, you can do a strong secondary attack and take them out. And of course, we haven't seen the mobs in the higher biomes yet, really. I think the pacing of the combat seemed reasonable and the difficulty of the mobs seemed kind of on par with what I would have expected. Then of course, mobs combined with being in the shroud adds an extra layer of danger and there will definitely be many death runs to recover your grave. However, when you die, and die you shall, <laughs> you won't be totally without defense. You still have your armor and weapons on you and some food, but a decent percentage of all the items you've collected while you were out will be waiting in your grave marker. So it's not totally punishing to die, but it does give you incentive to go back to your grave marker, which will be automatically marked on your map so you can retrieve your goodies. So like I said, many people compare Enshrouded to Valheim and it is in some ways, such as it's open world, it's from an older time, it has the typical survival style mechanics, but it's more like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild in a way because it's not a randomly generated world. Each part is specifically handcrafted with replenishable resources. It's easier to gather resources and buffs like food and water are just that, buffs. They're not required, although obviously helpful. And the building system seems to aim to give you as much freedom as possible, including in terrain manipulation, just as its building predecessor, Minecraft, does. And Shrouded will release on Steam on Wednesday, January 24th in Early Access. Early Access means the game is not complete, and so they will be continuing to add things to it. They do plan to bring it to other platforms, but not until after 1.0. And King Games has decided to be hush-hush about its price until right before release, which has irritated some people. The only clues we've gotten is that it will be priced competitively for early access and will be under $50. I'll be covering Enshrouded with gameplay and tips and tricks, so make sure to like and subscribe. What do you think? Will you enter the Shroud? Until next time, happy gaming.